possible. Let me set up why we got on the Jalen Brown conversation earlier today. Uh, this guy, this handsome guy over here on the graphic, um, said on his uh, the the the, the uh, Goodman Ryan podcast that. If they're going to get better, Celtics need to trade Jalen Brown because it's really their only option. We've had this conversation a ton, Jeff, and again, this is why we're talking about it again tonight. The point is that there's really nobody else they could trade. Marcus doesn't get you enough, and yep. nobody really wants Kemba based off of his health or his position or his style that's of play right. and, and his whatever. So that's it. You've got one option. You've got two options. It's Tatum or Brown in order to mo- like make a needle-moving trade. So you think at this point you have to do – is it – now you're picking Jalen because you think Jason is the better player and the one who should stay here, or you think there's an issue with Jalen specifically that you think you want to get out from under, or is it just a fit where the two of those guys aren't going to be able together to make it work? I, I think Jason can be a top five player in this league in, in a few years. I, I think Jalen Brown right now, uh, his value, I'm not going to say it's at its peak because he can obviously get better. And he's, he's shown that over the last year or two. You know, he's gotten better in the half court, better decision making, become a better shooter, all of it. I just think Tatum's upside, especially in an NBA that values uh, offense scoring, uh, you know, you know, versatility among a forward. I I just think Tatum's a better overall player than Jalen Brown. Uh, So to me, again, I think you're stuck in a spot right now where either you've got to make a move with your coach or you've got to make a move with one of these three guys. And as you said, Kemba doesn't have the value. I wouldn't touch, I wouldn't trade Jason Tatum for just about anybody in the league. I I really do think he's a guy, if you put the right people around him, and and you need, again, you either need a point guard that can make people better, which Kemba just is not. He's just not. he's, He's never really been that guy. He's been better over the last 10, 12 games in that regard, but that's not his strength. He's always been a scorer. And now he's not even healthy. Let's face it. He's not the Kemba that that we saw in Charlotte. Um, so, yeah, I, I would – listen, if I'm Danny Ainge, I would I would look at every possible trade involving Jalen Brown at this point. Obviously, you, I'd look at every trade you, involving Kemba. Do you think they mesh or do you think they get along? Do you, like, there are people who kind of wonder – In basketball they, terms. In basketball, in terms, basketball terms. terms. Whatever yeah. it is or, you know, like, obviously they're, they don't have the same personality. Are they compatible? And they're not, are they compatible? Yeah. <laughs> Are they compatible? Um, is there any? Is there resentment? Is, is there this anything a match made in heaven, Goodman? Is, that is there anything we're missing this? here about I mean, why this listen, wouldn't work? I think there is, and, and I don't know if Sherrod's gotten some of this too. I, again, listen, take this with a grain of salt. It's not like these are like lockdown sources that tell me this, but I've heard it whispers enough that there's some jealousy there between these two guys, and there's been some jealousy there. Uh, maybe who who the guy is? Maybe Jalen a little jealous of the fact that. We've anointed Tatum uh, ahead of him. Whatever it is, I think there's a little bit of jealousy. But listen, they're 20, what, 23, 24 years old. Um, that's probably par for the course for anybody in this situation. Uh, but but I, I, I think they, they don't dislike one another or anything yeah. like that. I mean, They're, they're not chilling with each other. They're not hanging yeah, out. J- Jimmy's jealous but, of Joe Sway. All right. Well, because, I mean, the, the, big, the big thing, Trade the me. big thing about those two guys, and I, I've talked with a number of people about them is they push each other to be better and when you're pushing each other there is going to come a point where you're thinking like well shit i mean i'm just as good as him and then the other guy's gonna be thinking well i'm just as good as him does that mean that you can't play together no it simply means you understand that in order to be at that top shelf status that you want you got to keep getting better because that dude is continuing to get better the the thing that I'm, i'm the more i think about all that we're talking about and just the status of the celtics what the elephant in the room that I, I don't think we've addressed is the money. And we've talked about Brad and his new deal and how that's a deterrent for them getting something done. But you also have to look, and we talked about this in previous episodes, the luxury tax and the impact of that and taking on another player. Tax uh, tryout. What is that going to mean? And, and for someone like Jalen Brown, you are going to have to tax give up tryout. way more than you're probably going to be comfortable with to make something like that happen. And then the question becomes, are you a better team if you do that? Is Brad the guy that can then all of a sudden, will he have a team that's more conducive to what works for him? And if you're starting to cater your roster to your coach, that is a that is a major, major, risk. major problem. 
because you are you are setting yourself up for a devastating fall. I mean, if I think if it came to either making a significant change that's going to screw you up money wise or cutting loose, loose the coach and that's going to cost you a ton of money, you're going to cut that coach loose. You are absolutely going to do that. And I think if, if it gets to the point where they feel they have to make a change, that's the change I think they'll make. Remember when Rick Carlisle signed his new deal in Dallas a few years back and they automatically started sucking like, almost right after that. <laughs> there was a lot yeah. of talk and conversation about, is Mark Cuban going to cut him loose? No. What Cuban did, he wrote it out because the money of getting rid of him was way too high and the money you would have to invest in trying to significantly upgrade the roster it just didn't make sense and now they they're in this place where it's like we've got this really good coach but we're not really getting over that hump and if you're Danny Ainge you've got to assess whether is that your potential future having a really good coach who can't get you over the hump because you didn't <laughs> have the cojones to cut him loose when it seemed the time to do that was now those are some of the issues that Danny and, and Wick and all those guys have to work out. But the bottom line is it's going to cost a lot of freaking money to do something. Is there yeah. somebody else that would want Brad? In, in guys gotta check out. Because Jeff's scenario is I think risky. Those guys check out. I, I think if everything stays the same, there's a greater chance that Tatum and Brown are going to check out because you're not going to improve this roster. You're not going to bring in pieces that's going to magically flip things around. And the Brooklyn Nets, guess what? They're going to be better next year. You know, the, the Philadelphia 76ers are probably but, going to be better next year. But like. that's the reason to do it more than anything else, Josue. If you're like, you're looking at these guys and like, it's not working. Not not that it's, I can upgrade talent to a player like Beal. We're not even having the, Jeff believes, you know, it's just, he's a more talented yeah, player. If, if you can get him, get him. New, if you could upgrade a new right? voice to these young guys, like that's, yeah. I think that's, that's a strong part. And I'm with that. Could do that. Like, they I'm might. With, but you, 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 you know what? You don't, you don't need to. That is option A. That's option A. Option B, if you can't do that or Wick won't pay for the buyout for Brad Stevens, you got to look at option B. Because oh, I, I thought you a, had it the other way around. See, I thought you I thought you were saying give Tatum a new running mate over replacing Brad Stevens. If it's Bradley Beal, I'm in. If it's I'm Bradley Beal, right. If it's Bradley Beal, right. I'm not giving Jalen – I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if I can get Beal – that might be option A for me. Okay. Yeah. Right. That might be the e like. But don't trade Jalen just to trade him. I got you. No, hell no. <laughs> hell no. No, 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 no one's going to do that. But... Again, I really think Jalen has gotten so much better. You got to remember, guys, I saw him in AU. I saw him at Cal. He sucked at Cal. Now, yeah. he, he has made such strides in the last year, to be honest, and what he can do on the half court and his decision yeah. making. In the last two years, in, in his perimeter shot. That still doesn't mean I well, want him shooting a ton of threes. You I had, still his yeah, strength is going to the basket. You right? had a you, you had an early season mea culpa on Brown when you opened up your preseason uh <laughs> chip chip oh, yeah, chip chat around the Celtics was Brown's never gonna be a number two guy. He's more yeah. of a three or four option. Oh, then he comes out and he shoots 85% from everywhere. And it's like, all right, maybe he is. But again, <laughs> if he's a two and wants to be a one and he's gonna be and he and Tatum can't figure it out together, I don't know. Yeah.